Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shannon Dor Briscoe, and today we will be covering Ezekiel 45 through 46 and 1 John 2. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth reading of your word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Israel fully restored. Ezekiel 45. When you allot the land as an inheritance, you are to present to the Lord a portion of the land as a sacred district. 25,000 cubits long and 20,000 cubits wide. The entire area will be holy. Of this, a section 500 cubits square is to be for the sanctuary, with 50 cubits around it for open land. In the sacred district, measure off a section 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 cubits wide. In it will be the sanctuary, the most holy place. It will be the sacred portion of the land for the priests who minister in the sanctuary and who draw near to minister before the Lord. It will be a place for the houses as well as a holy place for the sanctuary and area 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 cubits wide will be long to the Levites who serve in the temple as their possession for towns to live in. You are to give the city as its property an area 5,000 cubits wide and 25,000 cubits long adjoining the sacred portion it will belong to all Israel. The prince will have the land bordering each side of the area formed by the sacred district and the property of the city. It will extend westward from the west side and eastward from the east side running lengthwise from the western to the eastern border, parallel to one of the tribal portions. So this land will be his possession in Israel, and my princes will no longer oppress my people, but will allow the people of Israel to possess the land according to their tribes. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. You have gone far enough, princes of Israel. Give up your violence and oppression, and do what is just and right. Stop dispossessing my people, declares the Sovereign Lord. You are to use accurate scales, an accurate ethel, and an accurate bath. The ethel and the bath are to be the same size. The bath containing a tenth of a homer and the ethel a tenth of a homer. The homer is to be the standard measure of both. The shekel is to consist of twenty genera, twenty shekels plus twenty five shekels plus fifteen shekels equal one minna. This is the special gift you are to offer, a sixth of an ephel from each homer of wheat, and a sixth of an ephel from each homer of barley. The prescribed portion of olive oil measured by the bath is a tenth of a bath from each con, which consists of ten baths, or one homer, for ten baths, 
are equivalent to a homer. Also, one sheep is to be taken from every flock of 200 from the well-watered pastures of Israel. These will be used for the grain offerings, burnt offerings, and fellowship offerings to make atonement for the people, declares the Sovereign Lord. All the people of the land will be required to give this special offering to the prince in Israel. It will be the duty of the princes to provide the burnt offerings, grain offerings, and drink offerings at the festivals, the new moon, and the Sabbaths. At all the appointed festivals of Israel, he will provide the sin offerings, grain offerings, burnt offerings, and the fellowship offerings to make atonement for the Israelites. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. In the first month, on the first day, you are to take a young bull without effect and purify the sanctuary. The priest is to take some of the blood of the sin offering and put it on the doorpost of the temple, on the four corners of the upper ledge of the altar, and on the gatepost of the inner court. You are to do the same on the seventh day of the month for anyone who sins unintentionally or through ignorance, so you are to make atonement for the temple. In the first month, on the fourteenth day, you are to observe the Passover, a festival lasting seven days, during which you shall eat bread made without yeast. On that day, the prince is to provide a bull as a sin offering for himself and for all the people of the land. Every day during the seven days of the festival, he is to provide seven bulls and seven rams without effect as a burnt offering to the Lord, a male goat or a sin offering. He is to provide as a grain offering an ephel for each bull and an ephel for each ram, along with a hen of olive oil for each ephel. During the seven days of the festival, which begins in the seventh month, on the fifteenth day, he is to make the same provisions for sin offerings, burnt offerings, grain offerings, and oil. Ezekiel 46 This is what the Sovereign Lord says. The gate of the inner court facing east is to be shut on the sixth working days. But on the Sabbath day, and on the day of the new moon, it is to be opened. The prince is to enter from the outside through the portico of the gateway, and stand by the gatepost. The priests are to be sacrifices his burnt offerings and his fellowship offerings. He is to bow down in worship at the threshold of the gateway, and then go out. But the gate will not be shut until evening. On the Sabbaths and new moons, the people of the land are to worship in the presence of the Lord at the entrance of that gateway. The burnt offerings the prince brings to the Lord on the Sabbath day is to be six male lambs and a ram, all without defect. The grain offerings given with the ram is to be an ephel, and the grain offerings with the lamb is to be as much as he pleases, along with a hen of olive oil for each ephel. On the day of the new moon, he is to offer a young bull, 
six lambs and a ram, all without effect. He is to provide as a grain offering one ephel with the bull, one ephel with the ram, and with the lambs as much as he wants to give, along with a hen of oil for each ephel. When the prince enters, he is to go in through the portico of the gateway, and he is to come out the same way. When the people of the land come before the Lord at the appointed festivals, whoever enters by the north gate to worship is to go out the south gate, and whoever enters by the south gate is to go out through the north gate. No one is to return through the gate by which they entered, but each is to go out the opposite gate. The prince is to be among them, going in when they go in, and going out when they go out. At the feasts and the appointed festivals, the grain offering is to be an ephel with a bull, an ephel with a ram, and with the lambs as much as he pleases, along with a hen of oil for each ephel. When the prince provides a free will offering to the Lord, whether a burnt offering or fellowship offering, the gate facing east is to be opened for him. He shall offer his burnt offerings or his fellowship offerings as he does on the Sabbath day. Then he shall go out, and after he has gone out, the gate will be shut. Every day you are to provide a year old lamb without defect for a burnt offering to the Lord. Morning by morning you shall provide it. You are also to provide with it, morning by morning, a grain offering consisting of a sixth of an ephel, with a third of a hen of oil to moisten the flour. The, the presenting of this grain offering is to the Lord, is a lasting ordinance. So the lamb and the grain offering and the oil shall be provided morning by morning for a regular burnt offering. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. If the prince makes a gift from his inheritance to one of his sons, it will also belong to his descendants. It is to be their property by inheritance. If, however, he makes a gift from his inheritance to one of his servants, the servant may keep it until the year of freedom. Then it will revert to the prince. His inheritance belongs to his sons only. It is theirs. The prince must not take any of the inheritance of the people driving them off their property. He is to give his sons their inheritance out of his own property, so that no one of my people will be separated from their property. Then the man brought me through the entrance at the side of the gate to the sacred rooms facing north which belonged to the priests, and showed me a place at the western end. He said to me, This is the place where the priests are to cook the guilt offerings and the sin offering, and bake the grain offering to avoid bringing them into the outer court and consecrating the people. He has then brought me to the outer court and led me around to its four corners, and I saw in each corner another court. 
in the four corners of the outer court were enclosed courts, 40 cubits long and 30 cubits wide. Each of the courts in the four corners was the same size. Around the inside of each of the four courts was a ledge of stone with places for fire built all around under the ledge. He said to me, These are the kitchens where those whose minister at the temple are to cook the sacrifices of the people. That was Ezekiel 45 through 46, and now we will be turning to 1 John 2. First John 2. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, ours but also for the sins of the whole world. Love and hatred for fellow believers. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God, is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing to you a new command, but an old one which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new command. It is truth is seen in him and in you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. Reasons for Writing I am writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I am writing to your fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God lives in you and you have overcome the evil one. On not living the world. On not loving the world. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For in everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world, as its desires, pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. Warning 
against denying the Son. Dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They want they went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father, whoever acknowledges the Son, has the Father also. As for you, see that what you have heard from me and from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he promised us, eternal life. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not in counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him, God's children and sin. And now, dear children, continue in him, so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. And that was First John 2. Uh, that concludes the daily uh, the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Ezekiel 47 through 48. And first John three. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. So I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said Amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe twenty twenty two for today. I, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God, and as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I, so please come back and see us tomorrow, because God willing, will be here, and we hope that you are, too. Please like and share.